Hoot hoot. I don't usually do this webcam thing. The lighting's terrible. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, kicking off the video. I'm gonna do what I always do. I'm gonna get myself a little sip of water. Because I never remember to do it before I start recording. Today is gonna be a little bit different. And yes, I do always do these hand motions while speaking and not moving in the game. But today's gonna be a little bit different. I wanna do something that I don't normally do. I'm gonna take you down a journey. An interesting journey of my video game career, how I wound up the way I am today, and why I'm kind of burnt out on video games. So, kick things off, Diablo 2. This is Diablo 2 in all of its glory. I'm sure if you're a younger gamer, um, like I'm not old or anything, but like I'm sure if you're a younger gamer, maybe you don't recognize it. Maybe you haven't played it. It's an amazing game. You should play it. But it was pretty much the first game I remember playing that I bought on my own. And what I mean bought on my own, I mean I folded laundry or something and my mom gave me a dollar every week for however long I needed to save up to buy this game. And obviously since I'm not like 30, I wasn't alive when the game came out. I think I was actually. I don't, I don't actually know when this game came out. I wasn't alive when it was prevalent. But I bought the battle chest with, I think it was on sale for like $8 or something, and I installed it on this laptop that my dad gave me. It was like a Windows 98, just fucking awful. The thing was this thick, like, not joking, it was, it was that thick, and it was like the only thing I had uh, to game on. So I played on it, and it was a nightmare. In hindsight, uh, it ran like pretty well, considering, you know, fucking old ass laptop but we never really had like a ton of technology when I was growing up that was really my mom kind of just one day just got into tech and now we're fucking specked out but when I was little basically that was all I had um, the big computer was reserved for like doing taxes and shit so like the only thing on it was TurboTax so I would just play on this Windows 98 machine and then one day my friend who lived down the street told me about this game called Maple Story, And that's something I'm sure some of you people have heard of. Maple Story was, I don't even know what I'm doing in this game right now. I'm literally just walking around. Sorry, I'm gonna dislodge my own thing real quick. Okay, um, Maple Story is an online multiplayer MMO type 2D brawler. It's something. I honestly couldn't even describe it. Uh, I, I would be playing it for this video, but as I've mentioned many a time in my Binding of Isaac videos, my keyboard doesn't have arrow keys, so... Uh, and I don't really feel like setting up a layer on my keyboard just so I can fucking... You know... Um, Not enough you don't know, because I can't even finish my own thought uh, so I can play Maple Story. <laughs> Every now and then I, I whip out the old keyboard and I, and I play it, but I don't really have like a ton of interest in digging through my meager belongings to find a keyboard to download MapleStory, to play MapleStory for a video I'm not even sure will be good. We're already four minutes in and I haven't completed a single thought. Anyway, so MapleStory, my friend told me about it and I begged my mom, I was like, hey, um, I can't play MapleStory on this laptop, can I use the big computer? And by big computer, I mean it was like a Pentium something or other. Uh, like, the most disgusting color of tan you've ever seen. Uh, the thing was terrible. And I think I mentioned it already, but this was like 2005, and we still had dial-up. I'm gonna let that sink in for a moment. It was 2005, and we still had dial-up. And that was like the biggest annoyance in my early life for gaming, because I didn't even know the difference. Like, I would go over to my friend's house, and they would have, uh, not cable, uh, broadband? I think it was, I don't know, the one that's in the phones <laughs> that's not dial-up. But, uh, she had, like, way better internet than me, and I just thought that, like, I don't even know what I thought. I was just like, oh man, I wish we had better internet. 
but I wasn't like, oh man, we should get like broadband. Anyway, so I downloaded MapleStory on this terrible old computer, which was old even by 2005 standards, and I installed MapleStory on it. It took me three days to download it. Three days. And by the end of it, I was like, I was so excited. And I loaded it up. And this was, I think, November 2005. I loaded up MapleStory for the first time ever. And I made a rogue. I think they're called rogues. At the time, there were four classes. There was warrior, archer, rogue and magician I think and I was like oh dude I'm gonna be this edgy as shit character I'm gonna be a rogue hell yeah and I was like so hyped and uh, I named my character my, my friend told me all about the classes and you could be like a bandit with like daggers or like a, an assassin who used throwing stars and I was like oh man I want to do that and and she was like yeah people they shorten the word assassin to sin and I was like oh man that's so edgy and great I freaking love it so I named my character Last Sin or something, I don't even know. And that was kind of like where I got my internet moniker of I Last Me. Um, it kind of went from Last Sin to I made a new character later and I called myself I Last Me. I was like, oh, it's so funny because I'm the only me, so of course I'm the last me. <laughs> In hindsight, it's not that funny. But I thought I was so fucking clever when I was a kid. So basically, um, I w played MapleStory on this dial-up connection. It was actually atrocious. Uh, so, so bad. It took me, when I would go to the free market, which, for those of you who haven't played MapleStory, it's like a place where you can like buy um, vendors and sell your goods and stuff, and you can look through other people's goods. It's basically like, it's always packed. It doesn't matter what server you're on. It doesn't matter what time of day, what fucking time zone, it doesn't matter anything. It's always going to be completely packed. It would take me actually like 20 minutes to load the free market because there were just hundreds of people and hundreds of things. What does this mean? I'm out of arrows or something? I don't even know. I haven't played this game in a long time and I'm just playing it so I could talk about it. <laughs> but um, it would take me so long to load and I would just go in there and hang out and I'd be like that guy on a on fucking RuneScape, like, looking for GF, looking for GF. I think at one point I actually did that, and I had this online fucking, I'd never met her, I didn't even know her name, uh, and it was probably like a 40-year-old dude, and uh, like, I was so like, I was like, ooh, ladies. <laughs> but it was like, it, it was so exciting, and that was by far my best memory. In, not not the not the lady thing, the Maple Story thing. <laughs> Playing Maple Story with my friend over dial up. Um, it was trash. And oh fuck, have I been throwing my javelin? Am I? Yep, I've been throwing them. God damn it. Um, let me identify this really fast. Oh, I don't have any identify -y things. So I guess I will not be doing that. I'll just go back to this. Uh, running low on arrows too. We might be fighting with fists soon, boys. Anyway, so. Maple Story is my best memory, and that's why I consistently go back to it. Every couple years, I'll go on, I'll play for like a day. I'll make like a character to like level 70 or something. And then I'll be like, okay, I'm done with this for a while. Uh, let me go back to not playing Maple Story. But, I mean, like, it was the best gaming experience of my life. And I think it's really what got me into video games as a whole. And, what do you mean, freaking no room? Just put them on there. Toss them out. Okay, we cool, we cool. I got some arrows. Um, and I think it really defined me as a gamer as a whole. And from there, I kind of... I moved on a little bit to my friend... <laughs> Basically, my friend influenced me in every video game decision ever. But uh, she showed me this game. And it was Fable 1. And she showed me how you could become like affected by the different decisions you make and like you could grow horns if you're super evil and uh and I was like oh man that's like real cool and she was like yeah and the second one is coming out and I was like oh shit what do I need to play it and she was like oh you gotta get an Xbox 360 and I was like oh my god it's so expensive so you know like you do um you kind of just wait until your birthday or Christmas and and you ask like hey can I get this thing 
and my parents never really were big on getting me electronics for gifts. Um, I think they thought it would make me like lazy. And I mean, look at me now. I'm, I'm sitting in front of a fucking computer talking about video games. But basically, uh, they were really against the idea, and I just I like mine. begged and begged and begged. Especially considering I didn't mention this to them, but it's a rated M game, and they they didn't know that. And I think it definitely would have swayed them in the opposite direction because they were very against me playing rated M games. Um, up until I was like probably like 15, like I had never owned a rated M game aside from the ones I secretly bought, like Fable. So basically. Do I have any HP? Oh my god, I have so many HP potions. Why did I not automatically go to the fucking- Ah! Basically, I made a deal with my parents. I was like, I want just this for the whole year. No Christmas present, no birthday present, except this. And my mom was like, sure. Sure, John. We'll fucking do this. But you're buying your own games, um, and you're gonna have to pay for half of it or something. And like, now that I'm an adult, I realize that that's basically just, like, do a bunch of fucking chores, because it was their money anyway. Like, pay for half of it is, like, do a bunch of chores, get some money that we give you, and it's not even really your money, because they give it to you. So, I bought this fucking Xbox, and I bought Fable, and for the longest time, it was the only game I owned. I just played Fable over and over, Fable 2, over and over and over again, every fucking day. Um, I did the little cheat thing where you could get like a million dollars by fucking upping the price on the housing and then fucking changing your system timer. I did everything in that game. Everything imaginable. And I loved it. And then I moved on from there to Oblivion, which I think I, like I have an Oblivion video on here. I've talked about it extensively. One of my favorite games of all time. Actually amazing. And I just... I'm like so, I was so overwhelmed with all of these games, and there's so much decision, or so many decisions, so many choices, so many things you can do, and like just looking through the types of games I played, they were always very open, and nowadays, like I find myself, um, I, I buy a game, and I go to play a game, and I just, I find myself like sitting around wondering what game to play more often than I find myself actually playing the game. And that's like a huge trap I've fallen into, to where even making this video, like, I, I've been wanting to make a video for days, and I just couldn't think of what game to play during. And that's why I just threw on this. I don't even know what the fuck's going on. It's just such a mindless game that I've just been playing it. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. It's just such a mindless game that I can just kind of talk during it. And, oh. Ah! God, I hate sneezing. I'm not even sneezing, but like, you know the- It's like the buildup. It's always there. And I've, I've, I've fallen in this lull. And I don't know how to get out of it. No game- Like, the closest I came to the same- Oh, I just bumped my mic. The closest I came to feeling the way that I did as a kid was when The Witcher 3 came out. I bought it for my PlayStation. And uh, I just played it, and there's so much side objective bullshit to do in that game that it really, like, made me feel the same way that Oblivion did. And, I mean, I was really excited, and I just kind of got burnt out on it like I do everything. Not enough and I just really want to go back. And, I mean, if anybody's watching this, <laughs> do you- Oh, no, I'm gonna die. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> do you ever wish you could just go back in time to the beginning of your video game career and live it all again. And I mean, I definitely do. I consider myself a gamer. A gamer girl! Uh, I consider myself a gamer. Maybe not on the level of some other people, but I definitely do. And I wish I could go back and experience the glory days. Not even when games were better. I don't think games were better back then. I think they're way better now. But I'm just not in the same position that I was as a kid to where um, I get that sense of wonderment anymore, and I wish I did. Do you feel the same? Uh, I hope you enjoyed my little story. 
I hope you write me a paragraph in the comments about your gaming experiences. Tell me what games you ran through. And if you enjoyed the video, maybe consider giving it a little, uh, little thumbs up, perhaps? And if not, I appreciate you watching 15 minutes of me talking about basically nothing. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe I'll see you in the next one. Toodaloo!